Live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman. My co-host for this segment is Justin Warren. This is the 10th year of theCUBE here at VMworld 2019. We're in the lobby of Moscone North and hop and welcome to the program. First, a first time guest on the program, Jun Yang, who is the Vice President of Product Management and Engineering at VMware. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And welcoming back to the program is Varun Chabra, who's the Vice President of Product Marketing of Cloud at Dell EMC. Varun, great to see you. Thanks, Stu. All right, uh, June, uh, you, you know, there's so many different pieces yep. uh, talking about cloud. Uh, you know, we, we think back, you know, 10 years ago, you know, Paul Moritz was talking about, it's like, it's the software mainframe is what we're talking. <laughs> uh, because, you know, even back then, you know, cloud isn't really, it's not a destination or a place. You know, there is no cloud, it's just somebody else's computer. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's more of an operating model. So, of course, the VMware cloud on various solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, sitting here with Dell, I'm sure we'll be talking about the VMware cloud on, on Dell EMC, okay. but just, Give us overall a little bit about, you know, you're in a lot of customer meetings, mm -hmm. you know, what, what's resonating with your customers? What are they coming to you to discuss when it comes to their overall cloud strategy? Yeah, I think for a lot of customers, they're really looking for both a hybrid cloud story as well as a multi-cloud story. I mean, this is something that Pat spent quite a bit of time talking to you on the Monday's keynote. When we see customers, clearly, Many of them have very large existing footprints on premises, and edge is, uh, again, as a growing segment of their infrastructure, it's also getting very significant, making very significant investment over there, and of course, the public cloud itself. So we see many customers really trying to straddle the combination of the private cloud, the public cloud, and the edge side. And our strategy is really, we want to have a consistent infrastructure that's running everywhere. So therefore, we have a consistent operational model that enables the customer and their admins to be able to do that. Yeah, in, in some ways, it reminds me back, you know, in the early days when I worked with VMware, uh, every group had some application they'd built, mm -hmm. and yeah. you know, which server they bought, right. you know, it, 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 you know, they would run VMware underneath that because it yeah. would help with the efficiency in there. Yeah. So, in some ways, is is, is multi-cloud similar to what we had in multi-vendor back in the day? <laughs> I mean, we think of, uh, you know, if you think about the first uh, iteration of VMware, right? We're really thinking about we're taking the, hy uh, the the hypervisor and making all the hardware underneath that to be really invisible, right? So you're using, you're dealing with the you're dealing with the hypervisor and really hide the heterogeneity of what's underneath that. And then we talk about, you know, our SDDC era, which is really focusing on software defined data center where virtualized not only compute, um, but also storage and network as well, and really hide the heterogeneity for that. Mm -hmm. And so the third iteration for us, really looking at the cloud as the next level of, you know, different infrastructure customer running. Again, we want to be able to hide that and offer a consistent operational model there. Yeah, so right. from the customer perspective, yeah. Uh, back in the day when VMware was new, it was yeah. new and scary for a lot of customers. <laughs> and we, ha we saw that with cloud as yeah. well. So yeah. 10 years ago, cloud was, was evil and wrong, mm -hmm. and we should never use it. <laughs> customers have moved on in both of those cases. Yes. Have, we, have we reached the point now where cloud is just, yes, it's accepted and we're going to be doing it. Are we, are we going to have another battle about whether hybrid or multi-cloud, or are customers just moved past that and are now looking at, we know what we want to use this right. for, so we know that we need to choose it. We're not going to be moving everything to the cloud, but we're not going to be putting everything in VMs either. Right. We're going to choose what is the right solution for the for the different yeah. use case. I think over the last a couple of years, that has become sort of the the de facto standard. People are comfortable with the cloud. People are comfortable with on premises. They know that it's going to be a hybrid cloud world. It's going to be a multi cloud world. Hmm. All right. So Varun. Uh, we talked about the VMware Cloud uh, on, on Dell EMC. We had a number of conversations uh, yeah. back at Dell Technologies World yes. uh, you know, earlier this year. Uh, when you look out in the general marketplace, they're like, oh, I look at the family. Well, Dell is the hardware, and VMware's the software. There, there were a lot of announcements this week that were the cross-pollination of pieces, and a lot of those are software pieces from the Dell family that tie into what's happening on VCF yeah. and the like, so uh, bring us the update. You know, Stu, as, as June said, both Dell EMC and VMware are incredibly customer-driven companies, right? So what we've been hearing from customers is one, they're really excited about being able to try out VMware Cloud on Dell EMC, so we're very, very happy to be working with VMware to bring this to market first. So that's something that, that our customers have been asking us for. But then along with that, as customers start understanding the model of the fully managed data, uh, you know, the, the fully managed infrastructure, uh, you can, the next question that customers have is, okay, I can now focus on higher value added services. And one of the things that immediately comes up next is, okay, what about my data? 
how do I protect it, right? I'm going to be running applications on this and we, we've already spoken on this show many times before. Data is increasingly one of our organization's most valuable assets, right? It's a competitive differentiator. We, we see news every day, if it falls in the wrong hands, what happens, right? So what we've been doing now, in addition to the, just the amazing amount of work that we've been doing with June's team, just to bring this to market, is we've also been working on the data protection side. So now with Dell EMC, data protection is now validated to be working on Dell EMC, uh, VMware Cloud and Dell EMC as a data protection solution. So this means that customers can not only take advantage of the, the integration that we have on the infrastructure layer, they can also take advantage of, just have the peace of mind that our industry leading uh, data protection solutions will, will be there to help them manage the data and protect their data. So it sounds like it's something that you don't have to think about it as an afterthought, which is often the challenge with, yes. with data protection. If you, if you wait to think about it, it never happens. So this pretty much just comes, we know it's going to work, yeah. turn it on day one, just have it start with your data being protected, yes. and just have that baked into the way that you run your operations, so that it no longer becomes spinning up a specific backup project, because those things, are yeah. they're always expensive, there's no, <laughs> there's no perceived value to the business of doing this, whereas if it's just now part of, this is how you run your infrastructure. So this is how you stand up yeah. a, code, a, yeah. a VM, VMware cloud on Dell EMC, and this is just how you should do business. I, you know, I, it's absolutely like that way. What, what we find that's really exciting about VMware cloud on Dell EMC is customers are asking us to deliver the cloud model, right, mm -hmm. to their data centers, to their edge locations. So that's how they want to consume uh, software solutions as well. So what's amazing about the solution is you're, you're doing everything through the browser, so that's how you're going to consume uh, data protection becomes an add-on service that you want to add on, right? And I'm sure over time we're going to add other capabilities as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's really, that's the, the key part here. The ease of consumption, uh, sorry, the ease of use and basically being able to consume things through the browser is a game changer for, for infrastructure on data, in the data center and on the edge. Right. So June, w w one of the things that yeah. definitely has caught our attention and mm -hmm. one of the bigger yeah. announcements this week is Tanzu and uh, yeah. Tanzu Mission Control yeah. is what they call it because you know, if I'm, if I'm going to have multiple locations, right. you know, we, we, we've been looking for, you know, my entire career in IT. <laughs> oh, you know, we're going to have some tool that's going yeah. to manage across these environments yeah. and, you know, maybe have VMware Cloud, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on Dell EMC, but I'll probably have VMware Cloud on some of the public clouds and I yeah. might also be doing some Kubernetes yeah. that's not even with the VMware right. pieces. So help paint a picture as to kind of where we are today and where we're going mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to, you know, that management consumption and uh, maybe even some of the finances and uh, getting to that mm -hmm. cloud operating model across yeah. all my environments. Yeah, I mean, Tanzu, uh, I mean, Tanzu is a kind of portfolio name for a number of products within that. Tanzu Mission Control, of course, is one part of that. The way we view Tanzu is that this is really a multi-cloud platform. We understand that customers, uh, developers in particular, wanted to use, consume, be able to consume Kubernetes cluster. And uh, often, they want to choose Kubernetes cluster based on different cloud for a variety of reasons. Sometimes cost, sometimes resiliency, sometimes just geographical availability. And uh, then they needs the way to be able to see this in a consolidated fashion. And that's what Tanzu Mission Control does, and that's what I showcased yesterday at the keynote, to really show that you can now have a single pane of glass to be able to see all of these clusters across multiple cloud. And, and then be able to you know, do some troubleshooting and so forth, making things much easier. Then of course build up policies on top of these clusters. And then we'll can propagate the changes and making sure those are enforced. So those are some really, really, uh, I think really good operational uh, capabilities that really simplifies the day-to-day -day operational uh, you know, kind of the task that uh, an operator has to do. Mm. It's part of the driver for this that, that enterprises who've got this investment in vSphere, so they've, they've spent 10 years, uh, yeah. 10 more years, yeah. investing in, in vSphere, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you've got these cloud people who want right. to come and do things in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. So now as a business, I, either, I have to make a choice of, well, do I invest a lot of money in both of these things? Right. Do I move everything to one model? Yeah. It sounds like you're actually trying to provide customers with a way that say, look, you've already made these investments, yeah. you don't have to throw them all away, mm -hmm. you can still operate yeah. things here, but you can also have these cloud things without having to move everything off into a completely different operating model. Is, is, is that fairly accurate? So I think we, well, we are very customer driven, right? We want to deliver what customer wants to, wants to be able to consume. Um, so, you know, that's why, you know, part of the reason we're so excited about Project Pacific on mm. top of the vSphere side mm. is really the customer has made a huge investment uh, on the vSphere platform and we've got, you know, 500,000 customers out there and tons of customers, that becomes their standard in the data center. And then you now have a Kubernetes coming in and containers coming in and 
and we don't want a customer have to do a siloed platform for it. And by embedding Kubernetes directly into vSphere itself, we have now made vSphere the platform for containers and for VMs as well. As well. Mm. So that investment, you know, the customer has made on the on the on the vSphere side now kind of moves on to be able to cover uh, the Kubernetes and containers as well. And because our SDDC and our hybrid cloud story, we're taking the same vSphere across to VMware Cloud on the down EMC, VMware Cloud on AWS, and VMware Cloud you know, on Edge and so forth. That means all this benefits that Project Pacific brings is now going everywhere. Mm. Yeah. Having spoken to some clients about the experience of even yeah. managed Kubernetes services, yeah. uh, it's really, really painful for them. <laughs> so being able, having yeah. the ease of use of vSphere, yeah. coming, if you could bring that to Kubernetes and, yeah. and have that as a managed service, I'm yeah. sure you'll make a lot of people very happy. That's that's why we're so excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. Tuna, I want to click one level further on yeah. the Project Pacific stuff, because yeah. the thing that struck me at first is like, wait, you know, containers and Kubernetes, that's yeah. going to be the cloud and beyond, yeah. you know. Vsphere, we want to modernize it, but you know that's not what I want to put in the public cloud. But project specific is this yeah. primarily a data center offering? Mm -hmm. If I'm doing VMware cloud in a public cloud, do I expect to be leveraging yeah. the native public cloud? Yeah. And then Tantu helps me manage across them. Is that how I think of them, or am I not getting the full story? Yeah. So think a little bit about think about there's one uh, one one track is you can do is all vSphere based clouds, right? vSphere based on premise, vSphere based on Dell EMC vSphere based on top of a you know, public cloud, right? That's one track. If you follow that track, then Project Pacific essentially allows you to be able to run both Kubernetes and virtual machines on a single platform. Now, if customers also wanted to be able to run a native cloud, then this is where we're kind of bring tons of mission control in, because that's a multi-cloud story. So that was kind of what uh, Pat was trying to explain at the keynote in terms of hybrid cloud versus the, versus the multi-cloud. Right. Okay, so you don't actually have to make a choice of, one way of saying yeah. things, of the, the, the tyranny of the yeah. single glass of pain yeah. is that <laughs> you, you have to make choices and you can't have a lot of things. And yeah. if there's one thing enterprises yeah. hate is that's, that's dedicating themselves to just one way of doing things. They like to have choice. We want to give them a choice as well. Yeah, right. so it be, having that ability to be able to make those choices and have it be an and decision instead of or, I think that's, yeah. that's really valuable. Yep. All right. So yeah. Varun, one of the questions we've gotten from customers this week is, you know, your, 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 your partners here at VMware have just made a lot of acquisitions. There's a lot of integration work that needs to get done there. Yeah. Dell's got strong experience in the things that sit on top of the stack. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Give us a little bit as to what we should see going forward on, on your platform. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if, if there's anything that's, that's apparent this week is that VMware and Dell Technologies are just getting started. I mean, even as a, uh, having, having known a little bit about some of these announcements, it was just so exciting to see all of that stuff come real. And we are very, very excited to continue to work with VMware to bring you know, uh, Tanzu, the various components of Tanzu, more Kuber, uh, container stuff as well, as well as other, other um, capabilities that we saw in you know, vRealize Orchestrator and automation. Mm -hmm. We want to bring that to our customers in an integrated fashion so that it's easy for them to deploy, yep. and just easy for them to use. And so I think what you're seeing here is just the start that sounds fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, all of this investment that we're that we're seeing from from VMware and from Dell EMC, mm -hmm. like, are customers going to see the payoff immediately, like tomorrow, or are we going to have to wait another, you know, wait for some of these investments and in integrations to pay off? How how long are we going to wait? I mean, I think a lot of this is coming to fruition already. We announced the availability of VMware Cloud on Dell EMC at VMworld. Mm -hmm. So it's ready for customer to purchase today, right? If a customer wanted to, you know, much like what I demoed at the keynote, if a customer has a data center they want to stood up wherever they need to be, they can literally place an order and be able to get that, right? So that's a benefit they can have immediately. And of course, a lot of the longer term things we've been talking about by layering additional capabilities when Project Pacific comes into fruition, this becomes available you know, across the VM VMware Cloud and Dell EMC um, products as well. I mean, these things will all kind of continue with snowballing as we go forward, but there's immediate benefit today and there'll be ongoing benefit as we go forward making additional investment. Excellent, I don't have to wait forever. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's about instant gratification. <laughs> Sign that check now. <laughs> yes. Uh, Varun, I uh, wonder if you could speak to kind of the changing application portfolio as customers are modernizing, going yep. cloud native on yep. that. W yep. What's the impact on, on your platforms and what, what are you seeing and hearing from customers? You know, uh, there is obviously a lot of interest in containers mm -hmm. and customers are, are either already uh, trying it out or having some sort of applications that are packaged there or they have, or they're looking at it and saying this seems really interesting. Mm -hmm. In some ways, it, it, uh, it, it seems very, very similar to what, what I saw from customers five years ago when people were saying, oh, I'm going to move everything to the public cloud. And you know, sometimes you hear a little bit of, oh, I'm going to move everything to containers. Right. 
I, I think what we will likely see over the next few years is a little bit of rationalization, just like we saw with public and private, is that it's both. I think we will continue to see certain traditional applications and new applications live in more of a VM-centric model. Mm -hmm. And I think there will be, as, as there are new applications being built or as ISVs package up their applications to be more container friendly, we'll see some go that way. I, you know, if anything I've, I've learned, if there's one thing I've learned in the IT industry in all of these years is there really isn't a one size fits all <laughs> a solution. We get very excited about things and we're like, oh, everybody's going to do this. But right. the reality is things balance themselves out. And, and to June's point, yeah. what, as a vendor, what we want to do is we want to give our customers choice, yeah. right? We know that there's no one size fits all and we want them to choose what's right for their business and help them achieve their goals. So, June, last question I have okay. for you. First sure. of all, congratulations on the keynote yesterday. Thank you, I appreciate um, it. We heard, uh, you know, we, 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 we know a lot of the inside work yeah. and, yeah. you know, heard like the guy that swam across the English Channel, like okay. that got added to the agenda, you okay. know, like <laughs> days beforehand and flew <laughs> him across <laughs> and we understand what happened okay. with demos and yeah. last minute. Yeah. So, give us a little bit as to kind of the making of the yeah. team that helped put that together, <laughs> um, you know, yeah. anything that, you know, you were super excited that actually made the final stage that right. you, you might not have thought would have gotten there? You know, uh, we started out with, uh, we were very ambitious, right? And uh, we put in uh, 15 or 16 demos into it. And as we started putting things together, time was our biggest enemy. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, our friend Joe, who was uh, you know, running the day two show, he was telling me, you are 30 seconds over on this particular demo. You are 45 seconds on the other demo. <laughs> I said, Joe, give me some credit here. I'm trying to tell the story here. Um, so unfortunately, we actually had to cut some demos out just because it couldn't fit into um, the scope of time, we want to make sure the story really comes out and the customer really understood what we're trying to show. I mean, I'm just so excited as part of the, you know, me doing the key, day two keynote, I actually learned about a bunch of products I wasn't that familiar with. And so I was like, wow, I didn't even know we were doing that. And so just to see the amount of uh, capabilities that we're bringing to bear, it's uh, pretty astonishing and uh, it's, it's exciting. Well, yeah. June, I'll say it reminds me of yeah. other cloud shows where yeah. there's so much going on, yeah. so much new products getting yeah. launched that yeah. no single person can keep up with that. Yeah. But thank you, June and Vern, for helping thank our audience us. learn a little bit more about the areas that you're doing with. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having us. Yeah. For Justin Warren, I'm Stu Miniman, back with more coverage at VMworld 2019. Thank you for watching theCUBE. All right.